Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical. Hi, hello. It is Josh Bo, one of the many editors over at MavsMoneyBall.com, coming to you with another edition of Mavs Moneyball After Dark. A rough one tonight, Tuesday evening in Dallas at the American Airlines Center. Mavericks lose to the Phoenix Suns 133-104. Dallas on the second night of a back-to-back, so I guess it wasn't too out of the realm of possibility uh, for this to be a loss, but this was... This was a shit kicking like the the Mavericks got absolutely trounced tonight. Uh, Almost nothing good can be taken from this loss. I'm kind of at at a loss uh, of words myself to to kind of describe this game because it was just such a awful, no good, bad game. But I'm here with Dan, um, Dan, Dan Const. Oh, my gosh. Did I say your last name right? You got it. it. I don't think I've ever said your last name out loud. I never even thought about this before. Well, welcome. Um, it's it's uh, well, I'm glad that you can be one of the other people <laughs> in the world who said my name out loud. It's well, a tough well, one, honestly. <laughs> well, Dan, thank you for joining me on a, on a crappy night, a uh, crappy game. Uh, as I'm trying to compose my my thoughts to try to say something about this, what are what were your initial takeaways? I know we talked a little bit before we recorded, but uh, just what were you thinking watching this game? Anything you can take away from it other than it was a ass kicking of the highest order? For sure. I mean, it's tough for me because uh, over on the other side of the world, it's Wednesday morning. um, So it's just approaching lunchtime. And so now I have to (laughs) sit with this for the entire day. Like for you guys over the your side, you have to go to sleep, forget about it. For me, this is, I just sit and linger on this for the next, what, 10 hours before I go to bed. And I I think I'm probably just most disappointed about that. Um, And the fact that the Mavericks just did it was like that uh that gif i think of uh, like a simpsons gif where the the guy's dead on the floor and he's like poking with a stick he's like come on do something like the entire game was just brutal to watch um from the very beginning what rick called a timeout in in a re- like such a short amount of time after two horrible offensive possessions and then defensive possessions um i think if we take away the about the 30 seconds of honoring kobe uh I think Rick called a timeout in the first 50 seconds. Like it, it was that bad from the very start. Um, two texts were given out early, one from Luca, one from Rick. And it just seemed like the whole game was on a downward spiral uh, from the very beginning. So just really uninspiring basketball. There was no energy on the court. There was hardly energy, hardly any energy in the, in the crowd. It was just, it's just a tough game overall. And, it just seems like it seemed like Phoenix had their way with us, um, with the Mavs, and, and it's, you know they do. The Mavericks don't match up well against Phoenix for some reason. Uh, Booker always seems to have a good night, and and one of their wings usually has a good one. And then combining that with Aiton just dominating on the inside, it was just a recipe for disaster for for the Mavericks, and it was just brutal to watch. Yeah, I agree. Um, you kind of hit the nail on the head. You just never. From the very beginning, it never felt right. Mavs get outscored 32 to 19 in the first quarter. And really, I mean, and they made a run in the second quarter uh, and right before halftime. Uh, but really, you know, going down to a Suns team that big that early is just, you know, that's just, it, it just makes it so tough. Like even, you know, they yep. they make a little comeback in the second quarter, but they're still down by, I think they were about down by five or six at halftime. And that's still an uphill yep. climb and it's just hard to, to keep doing that uh, exactly and that was like after the Mavs gave their best punch like it was a right. really good basketball and they were still you know trailing down at the half you, you just can't you can't do that you can't start you, you know you sometimes the Mavs have like a an off maybe start at the second but they've built a good enough lead where they can sort of carry that but you can't you can't what did they score in the first quarter like 18 points or something. Yeah, they got 19 in the first quarter. 19 points. I mean, that's 
Luke has scored 19 points himself in, in quarters through this game, like uh, through the season. You can't have your entire team. I mean, Chris Stapps, well, the Chris Stapps, nine and three, he finished with. Like, you can't, Chris Stapps can't give us three rebounds. When you're only scoring nine points, you need to find other ways to make uh, an impact on the game. It just seems, it seemed like nobody really wanted to be there. Yeah, especially, I'm glad you brought up Chris Stapps because. Uh, second night of a back-to-back, and this is the first back-to-back since he returned from his knee injury that kept him out for 10 games. You right. know, he played and he missed the first back-to-back of the season. And then after that, until the knee injury, he played in every single one. In the off season, the Mavericks talked up. I mean, Mark Cuban himself said that they were going to load and manage him, which presumably meant they were going to keep him out of back-to-backs. And that hasn't really been the case. And I've been very surprised. Obviously, I'm not going to question the Mavs training staff because they're one of the best in the league. It's just just kind of surprising. They must be seeing something uh, yeah. from Chris Stops. But you look at a night like tonight, four fouls, two of eight from the floor, one of four from three, gets destroyed by DeAndre Ayton. It's like maybe we didn't, you know, this – maybe they didn't need to play him tonight. You know, they – yeah, it obviously wouldn't have made a difference, and so that just kind of hurts when you just look at him playing twenty minutes. Obviously, not a lot of minutes, but it's still like it just kind of feels like tempting disaster with just the way exactly. the night went. For sure, and like I'm actually surprised looking at his his, his box score, uh, box score nine three and one, because when I was watching, he looked like he was like driving to the rim a lot, and he was like it didn't look like he was being super passive like i've seen him i've seen him be worse um so i mean three rebounds on a, on a night when you're not scoring you've got to you've got to give up something elsewhere no blocks um yeah it's just a shame like it, you you scroll down the box score and, and it's the same it's the same story for everyone really um if it wasn't for jj brea of course <laughs> like the the broken emergency glass of jj brea like who knows how bad this could have actually gotten you know yeah i mean um what did i think i i tweeted it earlier he played like six minutes uh, 57 seconds and in that time he had what six points uh four assists two rebounds and you talk about uh dan you mentioned earlier like how they threw their best punch and they still couldn't get over the hump uh in those in that seven minute stretch where Berea was incredible didn't miss any shots the Mavs only went, were outscored the Suns by plus two in those seven minutes. I remember looking right. at it, and it's like, man, like they just they couldn't get anything going. Um, I, I think I, I got to talk about the third quarter. Uh, <laughs> we got to oh, talk yeah. about the third quarter. I think that's the last thing I can really talk about with this this game. They give up 48 points, franchise record. Uh, no joke. I've been watching Mavericks basketball for a majority of my life. I'm not that old. I'm going to turn 31 in a month or so. So <laughs> over 20 years of my life, I've been watching this team, I think. And that is by far the worst defensive quarter I've ever seen from the Mavericks ever. Yeah. Um, just, you know, there's, there's, it's hard to describe in a sense that sometimes, you know, it's, oh man, te- that team just got hot. And they're making yeah. everything and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, they're hitting shots in your face. They're hitting fadeaways. They're hitting circus shots. This team's just yep. feeling it. Uh, I think maybe there was some of that maybe toward the end of the quarter from Phoenix, but they were roll. You know, the only reason maybe that was happening was because they had so much confidence because the Mavs were basically giving a runway to whatever kind of open shot they wanted. Uh, yeah. It was just porous defense. Justin Jackson, I think, got his soul snatched from – Devin Booker multiple times in that quarter. I mean, Jackson was facing the wrong direct. He had his, when you're guarding a play, a wing player and your back is to him during a, during a dribble move. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you fucked up. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, huge mistake. yeah, I mean, it was just, I, I don't know what to say. The Mavericks don't have a lot of good defenders on the roster. You know, Kristaps is a great rim defender. Maxi is a good switching guy. And Finney Smith is is a good wing defender, but re, and Delon Wright is pretty good uh, as a guard. Although I think he's been a little inconsistent this year. But after that, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. There's effort, but he's not great. You know, Luka Doncic is not a great defender. Uh, Seth Curry it comes and goes. Justin Jackson, as we obviously saw tonight, like this, and Jalen Brunson. You know, he's kind of undersized sometimes, depending on the matchup. And you know, this defense is it's been average all year and when they have good performances, it's because 
all five guys on the floor are kind of in sync and they are covering up for each other's weaknesses and exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, you know, it's not necessarily one guy or a couple of guys that are just shut down guys. They don't have the, they don't have that. I think even when Finney Smith is good, I wouldn't call him like a shutdown guy. Um, no, no. And when and, he's at his best, like everybody else is rotating properly. Like right. he's, he's a, a cog in a very, like when the Mavs are good on defense, they're great and, and it's all working. But when it's not, I think you tweeted something like this, that it just unravels. Like it's just, it's just a horror show. Yeah. I think horror show is probably the best way to put that, that third quarter. Yeah. Like, you compare I'm, that third quarter to like, maybe you know clay going off for 37 in a quarter and he's just you know fade away threes turning around shots and stuff like and he's hitting everything and that's when you just go well there's nothing you could have done about that that's just going to happen whereas this third quarter for the mavs was just like what are you doing you're just watching ball like you're watching the ball there's a, a rebound that just bounced between a few guys um and they got and the sun's got an offensive board it was just they just looked they looked flat. It was similar to OKC. I know uh, they got the win last game, but it was similar a similar feel in that it just felt flat. Nobody uh, nobody was really stepping up too much outside of Luca. And I don't know if it's just uh, maybe some uh, tired legs out there or something, but I don't know. Have you noticed much of a difference in the last few games where they just feel as a whole like that they're just not really uh, up and about that they have like they have been? Yeah, I think that OKC game, uh, I think I felt the same thing too. I think outside of maybe two or three five-minute stretches, I think they looked a little little off um, offensively. I think I think they were a little bit better defensively, but OKC is way easier to guard uh, without Chris Paul, who wasn't playing that night. Um, and yeah, and you, you, know, you think about the Utah game, the way they closed the Utah game, Utah made – three of five from three in the final five minutes and shot, I think five of 10 from the floor when normally, you know, when you think about a crunch time game, things tighten up and it's harder to get off good shots. Utah seemingly got all the shots they wanted. Uh, OKC yeah. game, they kind of drifted in and out, even though they got the win because I think, you know, Luca had a huge burst there where he made five straight threes and, yeah. and the Mavs yeah. shot the three pretty well. And then, you know, you, you, tonight is obviously terrible. Uh, I think the trend I'm seeing that I really don't like about this Mavs team is that when things don't go their way, it, they it, it's like a meltdown. Like, it's just yep. – I know they've had some some decent comebacks uh, and they've, they've handled adv- some adverse situations fairly well. You know, you think about the Milwaukee win and the, and the Philadelphia win without Luka. But when they get hit in the mouth in a game – I it feels like the most likely scenario is that they they kind of fold up a little bit and I don't know if it's a mental thing it's probably a youth thing when you think about how many guys on this roster have never been on a winning NBA team uh, there's a lot yeah. of them uh, playing big minutes so it's a learning curve it's growing pains as I said the Utah game you know it, it sucks to watch but it's growing pains uh, and then they they got to figure out the home home record thing like it they're oh, thirteen man. and twelve just, at home makes that's no bad. Sense. Yeah, it makes no sense why they play. They look like a different team when they're at home. You think, you know, most of the time, obviously with sports teams, your home is is your fortress, and you 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 win against bad teams at home. Um, I'm not saying the Suns are a bad team, but they're not. You know, they're not like the Clippers or something where where you sort of expect to lose like against a, a good team at home. But uh, yeah, it's such a strange thing this season how they play out of their skin sometimes on the road and then they come back home and it's just uh like i said just sort of lackadaisical they're just not it's just uninspiring and i i don't know what the answer to that is i I don't know if there's a reason or if it's been addressed but for some reason when they're back in dallas it's just ho-hum sort of games I was thinking about like, cause you know, people tweet and they ask and they comment and they're like, is it the, like they think the crowd. And when you think Dallas, <laughs> you, you, you know, you see courtside and you see the lower bowl and, you know, you see all the, 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 the upper class, upper tier people, you know, the, you know, people think the rich, rich snobs that don't want to get out of their seat and cheer. And I haven't really wanted to say anything about that because honestly, I've been to four or five games uh, as a member of the media this season and in mo you know those games the crowd gets loud like the crowd has been getting loud when i've been in the building i don't know if that's yeah. necessarily the issue i think it can i think when you're watching on tv i don't know if the tv broadcast can 
can translate, you know, the home crowd uh, noise as it can't really replicate what it's like in the arena compared to maybe another broadcast. Or maybe, maybe it's just the way the AAC is, you know, I don't, there's a bunch of things that I don't necessarily know about, but I just know that when you're watching on TV, it is not what it's like in the building. I think that building gets pretty, pretty loud and it's gotten pretty loud this season. Uh, oh, I mean, tonight, uh, Boban caught the ball at the the top of the three with like a minute and a half left and the crowd went crazy. Like th- there's, they can, they can get loud when they want to. And like, I think he, um, uh, he posted up and he got a bucket out of it. Like, like the crowd went crazy. It was the loudest they were all night. Um, and like, I, if that's the moment that the crowd is getting the most excited for, then you know, you're watching a bad basketball game. If it's Boban catching the ball um, and they're just wanting him to shoot a three with a minute left, like, you know, you're in a tough spot, but maybe we should, um, I mean, there's not much left for us to really talk about, but maybe we could talk about Willie Cauley Stein with his, uh, with his debut for the Mavs. Uh, what did you see from his limited sort of uh, appearance? Uh, I thought it was hilarious that his first action was he missed a wide open dunk. <laughs> so it was like a really great sign. Uh, I thought it was especially hilarious when uh, Jeff Skinwade uh, in his report right before tip off, he, you know, he normally does a little, a little spot there before uh, a home game tips off. And he talked about talking to Willie Colley Stein before the game in the locker room with the, with the rest of the media and Colley Stein told him something like he's excited to be in Dallas because He's excited to to be more creative or, and to have more freedom on defense. And like, <laughs> I'm just listening to that and I'm cracking up because like we just saw this with Nerlens Noel and Ricarlo. I'm like, man, is this literally going to happen again? I know. And if you yeah. if you ask our Kings friends, uh, they'll tell you, yes, this is this is what's going to happen because he's not a good defender. Um, but he only played 12 minutes tonight, you know, after he had that stint in the first half where he didn't really do much and he missed a dunk. Uh, he played some garbage time minutes, which he, uh, doesn't really mean anything. So uh, there's not much for me to take away from this other than, you know, it will be a process to get him integrated into the lineup yeah. a little bit. And we'll just see from there. I would imagine the next game is maybe going to be the first game where we can see him play maybe real rotation minutes if, if that's yeah. what Rick wants. I think for me... I know he's not a great defender, but what was a positive for me to see was just his length. So, I mean, so many times Dwight Powell gets back down and, like, it's just nothing that, that he can do. But but at least, you know, Willie Colley Sign has, like, quite a uh, quite the wingspan. And Aiton, you know, backed him down a few times. But he was still active. Like, he wasn't just giving up. It didn't seem like he was giving up something easy. And, and Aiton was on another level tonight. He was, what, 11 from... Uh, he only missed like two shots or something. So yeah, he, was he was pretty hard from the floor. Yeah. He was hard to guard, but you know, it was just nice to see someone at least with some length guarding a big down low. Um, and the other, the other thing I liked was um, uh, there was a, there was a point towards the very end of the game where the Mavs got a, a rebound. I think uh, Bray got a defensive rebound and Coley Stein uh, galloped up the floor. He was the first on the floor and uh, he did miss an alley-oop. I think it was a bit of a stray pass to be honest, but it was just nice seeing a big like that run the floor faster than everyone else. I mean, it was the end of the game. No one sort of cared, but just to see his a little bit of effort there was, you know, if I'm going to take anything good out of it, it was that just seeing someone uh, really hustle back and, and show that he is a pretty athletic dude, but yeah, it'd be nice to see what happens when he's actually put into the rotation properly and, and uh, you know, has more than what two days of the team to figure out what's going on. Yeah, exactly. And We'll just see. The next game will be Friday at Houston. It's another back set of back-to-backs. We'll see if Kristaps Porzingis will play. They play Friday at Houston. Then Saturday, they come back home and play Atlanta. Um, so the Mavericks have a couple days to, to think about this, or hopefully not think about it, um, to be honest. Yeah, you're just going to wipe this from your memory, I think. There's, right. there's not much they can take out of it. Just forget about it, move on, and yeah, yep. Yep. up to Houston. And he- Yep, and Houston's struggling a little bit too. Uh, I don't know, even know James Harden has been out. He might not even play. So that, that's a chance for them to get, and they'll be on the road, which I guess they're more comfortable. So we'll see. But yep. I mean, that was a, that was a crappy loss. Let's let's get out of here. I'm going to go to bed. You got to you got the rest of your day ahead. Of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to sit and linger with this loss. I'm so, so, I'm so sorry, but let's just get out of <laughs> here. Uh, Dan, yep. thanks for joining me. I, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Anytime. 
Yep. And this has been Josh Bo. This has been Mavs Moneyball After Dark. The Mavericks, again, they lose to the Phoenix Suns 133 to 104. We will be back. Me, me or Kirk, one of us or the both of us will be back Friday night against Houston. <laughs>